Last year, I made a video discussing my favorite games of 2020, and now I'm back again to discuss the games I enjoyed the most throughout 2021. Not all of the games on this list were released this year, so expect some random games here. But first, my honorable mentions for games that I played, but didn't make the list. It felt cheap putting this on the list since I did last year, but I still actively play Destiny 2 and I'm always around when new content drops to unlock the newest Triumph seals. We've had some great Destiny content this year with Presage, Return of Vault of Glass, New Grass of Avarice Dungeon, and dozens of new exotics to play with. I can't wait for the release of Witch Queen in February, I know it's going to be a banger. Doom Eternal is another game I kept playing well into 2021 but didn't want to put it onto this list since it was present there last year. Nonetheless, it's still an amazing game, and the Ancient Gods Part 2 DLC, plus all of the free master levels and horde mode make it easy to love this game. I even went back and did another playthrough on Nightmare difficulty, and it was still amazing. Please play Doom Eternal if you haven't already. This year I also got around to finishing Link's Awakening on Switch, and it was a decent little game. Not one of my all-time favorite Zelda titles, but decent enough to hold me over until Breath of the Wild 2 hopefully comes out this year. If this list was a top 11, then Deep Rock Galactic would fill that slot. There's a great variety of mission objectives to keep things feeling fresh, and the amount of drinking I've done with my friend in the social hub is unfathomable. My most played class is Scout, just for the grappling hook alone. That gun has so much utility and I can't get enough of it. While it's never been one of my main games, it's something that I can always jump back into every once in a while for a few missions and have a blast. Other games that I started last year and want to finish in 2022 include Pokemon Shining Pearl, Dead Space, Mafia Definitive Edition, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, and the Dark Souls Trilogy. With the honorable mentions discussed, it's time for the top 10 list. I've only played through the first four chapters of Guardians of the Galaxy, but I'm sure everyone can agree that this game was surprisingly good. The humor is top notch and has made me laugh quite a bit, and the number of decisions you're given is something that caught me off guard at first. I'm not sure how much the overall game will be affected by my choices, but it definitely gets me interested in what possibilities a second playthrough may result in. The combat feels really smooth and satisfying to get right. Each team member has unique abilities that can be upgraded to synergize with not only their moves, but the skills of the other Guardians, so understanding how everyone plays together is an engaging experience. I've been playing the game on hard mode, and it feels pretty fair from what I've completed. Definitely excited to see what happens next in this game. I waited many fortnights for Halo Infinite to release, and thankfully I was not disappointed. The gameplay and the feel of Infinite is arguably the best in the series. It's so buttery smooth on Series X and controls great. And the grappling hook? Unbelievably fun. By far the best inclusion to the Halo series, although the game can sometimes feel like a fusion coil simulator. Almost every weapon feels great to use and has a variety of different combat applications. Fighting the Banished is always a blast, and the density of enemies feels both overwhelming and manageable. I've been playing this campaign on heroic difficulty and it feels just right, although getting shot by jackal snipers from so far away is a real pain. Zeta Halo is also a gorgeous location to explore, although I do wish there was more biome variety. Hopefully the rumored campaign DLC can remedy that. The 8th generation of Pokemon games definitely wasn't for everyone, but I honestly could not put it down. I've now played both Sword and Shield, with Shield being my main copy with the completed base game Pokedex and the expansion pass purchased. The new Pokemon they added here are awesome, with Dragapult, Copperjaw, and Cinderace becoming instant favorites for me. I love how the gyms were presented as large sporting events across the Galar region, and it made the Pokemon League feel just a bit more impactful. The champion battle against Leon was even actually a bit difficult despite the rest of the game being a breeze, and I appreciated that. Although visually the game can be a bit rough in some areas, I think we can all agree that the music is as good as it's ever been, which is stellar. Obviously the gym leader theme is amazing, but the battle themes from Marnie, Olina, Hop, and Leon are all beautiful. I haven't quite got every legendary in Crown Tundra, but I've had a good time with the Isle of Armor, especially the final fight against Mustard. Overall, I think these games are way too overhated and deserve a bit more recognition. They are perfect by any means, but I've had an absolute blast on both playthroughs. I'm not sure why it took me so many years to play Skate 3, but by god was it worth it. Not only is this game hilarious as sh**, but there is a surprising amount of depth in the types of tricks and combos you can string together. Getting a massive jump and performing long chains of tricks will always be satisfying and look cool as hell. I even bought Danny Way's Hawaiian Dream, and it's one of the best pieces of DLC I've ever purchased for its price. Thank you so much Adam for getting me into this game, it's so good and makes me wish for Skate 4 more than I could have ever imagined. Putting this game on my list of favorites of the year feels so weird, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't have a load of fun playing Wreckfest this year. Name another game where you could ram AI with school buses, cross a finish line with less than a quarter of your vehicle left, and drive a couch car. You can drive porta potties, bumper cars, ice cream trucks, monster trucks, you can drive everything man, it's awesome. 
I actually spent money on the DLC vehicles in this game because of how fun they were to use. I only wish that the developers would continue adding more fun tracks like Hellride, because this is where I find myself having the most fun. Sure you can do normal races with decent driving physics according to Adam the Forza fan, but Smashing Shoe will always be my go-to form of entertainment. Seriously, give this game a try, it's so unbelievably fun. It feels a bit unusual to put a COD game on this list, but once again, I'd be lying if I said I didn't play a lot of Cold War this year. I naturally got super into zombies like with most COD titles, and played the absolute hell out of that. I even got my first round 100 on D Machina last year, which was an awesome accomplishment. We got three maps in Firebase C, Marauder Tone, and Forsaken, all of which are really solid except for the last one, which was a bit disappointing. Outbreak was cool, but unfortunately it became a replacement for zombies content instead of being supplementary like myself and most of the community wanted. But besides that, I had a great time grinding my Dark Aether camo, and even found myself in multiplayer for quite a bit to grind Diem Ultra. I have yet to earn that camo, but I still loaded up every once in a while to progress a few camos. Cold War just scratched an itch that Modern Warfare 2019 didn't do for me in quite the same way, and I had a great time with it in 2021. This game is so goddamn crazy. I've never felt so many different emotions during a boss fight like I have in Dark Souls, though celebration always prevailed. My journey began with making the biggest mistake of my career and going to the catacombs first. I didn't know what the intended progression path was supposed to be, so I pushed forwards through all the agony and beat Pinwheel as my first boss outside of the Asylum Beacon. If I didn't muster the courage to spend 3 hours watching YouTube guys learn how to make it out of there, I would have quit the game permanently. However, I stuck with it and stomped my way through the first real area, eventually hitting the next big roadblock and almost quitting the game a second time at Battle Gargoyles. Then after beating those bastards, I didn't touch the game for another few weeks knowing that Blight Town was next. But once again I entered gamer mode and pushed through all the bullshit to find the fun. And let me tell you, once you get accustomed to the systems, there is a lot to enjoy. Overall, Dark Souls 1 is a really fun game that's unfortunately trapped under a lot of sh**, but if you stick with it, you'll enter the eternal love-hate relationship that we've all experienced with the series. This game is so goddamn huge, man. I finished the main story after 70 hours of playtime, accumulated over the past 3 years, and have since continued my journey through Ancient Greece with the DLC expansions. There is so much to do. Main missions, side missions, location objectives, arena fights, mythological monster fights, finding all sync points, exploring every island, upgrading your ship, and so much more. I originally didn't get into this game at launch because I played it almost immediately after finishing AC Origins, but after really giving it another shot this year I can safely say it's one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games, and even one of my favorite open world games. It's also the second funniest game I've played all year. There is so much dumb shit in this game. Enemies have absurd ragdoll physics when you kill them, you can drop off literally any height and take zero fall damage, your horse moves weird as hell, at max notoriety there can be upwards of 30 enemies chasing you at once, you can sleep with so many people, Socrates is apparently a champion in bed, your dad tells you to piss off and collect artifacts for him after meeting him the first time in your life outside the gates to Atlantis. The countless moments of unintentional and intentional humor in this game made it a joy to play, and it was really nice to play while turning my brain off late at night and relaxing while listening to music. As of writing this script, I'm now level 69 with 112 hours played, while just recently starting the second episode of the Fate of Atlantis DLC. So yeah, I'll be playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey well into 2022. When I first started Hollow Knight, this game did not jive with me. Death was extremely punishing and I had no idea where to go. After slowly making my way to the City of Tears, I didn't realize I had to go to the Soul Sanctum, at which point I didn't touch the game for a whole year. As of now, I've played 69 hours with 112 completion, most of the achievements, beat every Pantheon without bindings, excluding the Pantheon of Hollowness, completed the Path of Pain, and just recently defeated Absolute Radiance in the boss practice arena. Despite the initial slog not doing it for me, I stuck with the game and ended up loving it way more than I expected. The movement feels so good, and some of the boss fights in Hollow Knight are on another level, man. Pure Vessel? Amazing. Sisters of Battle? Incredible. Grape Prince Zoe, when he decides to not have bullshit attack patterns? Both a mechanical and visual spectacle. This game's art style as a whole is beautiful. You can tell how much effort was put into making this game look how it is. And considering it was put together by such a small team, it's unbelievably impressive how well this game is made. Sekiro was my first From Software game, and I honestly didn't expect to like it as much as I did. But the rush of emotion I felt when conquering each boss in this game was indescribable. While I didn't care quite as much for the mini bosses and thought the individual area design was simply decent, it's the main bosses that kept me coming back. Gyobu, Lady Butterfly, Ginichiro, Folding Tree Monkeys, Guardian Ape, Corrupted Monk, not you, True Corrupted Monk, Divine Dragon, 
Sword Saint Ishin, so many of these fights are expertly made with awesome mechanics. It's rare that a game makes me so energetic after completing an area, but you bet that beating several of these bosses had me throwing my hands in the air with overwhelming excitement. I spent whole weekends and many late nights practicing these fights, all for it to pay off with that one successful attempt where everything clicks into place. Like I said, this was my first From Software game I had ever played, and you bet that as soon as I finished Sekiro, I went ahead and purchased Dark Souls 1 to experience that series. Elden Ring is going to be crazy this year, and I definitely won't be missing it. And that's the list. As for the future, including this year, I plan to continue making reviews and have plenty of video ideas being worked on. They unfortunately just take a while to create by myself, and I only do them when I'm in the mood so I'm not half-assing it, so they'll be ready when they're ready. Thanks for watching, and even though I'm a few weeks late, I hope you had a great year. My next video will either be on the BO4 Zombies map 9 or a, or a critique of Ori and the Blind Forest, whichever I finish first. Have a great day.